Hello everyone and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you on this International Day of People with Disability event organised by the City of Glenara. I'm pleased to represent Caulfield Community Health Service today and it's great that our two organisations can work together in this way. I will be speaking with you about mindfulness and how it might help you in your life. I have three mindfulness activities for you to try today, but before we start, I thought it would be useful to say a few words about mindfulness, what it is, how it might help us, and also what it isn't. Now that mindfulness has become more widely known, some misconceptions or misunderstandings have arisen. So I'll just take a moment to mention some of these myths as identified by Dr. Rose Harris, who is a leading Australian teacher and trainer in mindfulness. So the five myths that he identifies are, are these. Number one, that mindfulness is meditation. It may be an important part of mindfulness practice, but there are many other ways to be mindful. Mindfulness comes from Buddhism. It is most commonly associated with Buddhism, but many of the great, great faith traditions, world religions, have elements of mindfulness in their practice over thousands of years. The mindfulness is a skill that can be developed. Thirdly, that mindfulness is relaxation. This is not the intent. You could actually be in a high stress situation feeling strong emotions such as anxiety, anger or sadness, but accepting these emotions and remaining in the present and therefore being mindful but feeling far from relaxed. Fourthly, mindfulness will enable us to think positive thoughts and get rid of negative thoughts. Instead, mindfulness allows feelings to come and go and helps us choose the ones that are going to guide us and the ones that we will let go. Fifthly, mindfulness will make us happy. If we lead a full life, we'll experience the full range of emotions and mindfulness allows us to accept all these emotions to flow through us without us being overwhelmed. When we are mindful, sometimes we'll be happy and sometimes we won't. So how can mindfulness assist us in our lives? Being present with whatever our current situation is, even if it's a present that we don't like or want. It can help us from being too much in the past, going over old stories which can sometimes make us feel sad or regretful. It can help us from being too much in the future which can cause anxiety, cause our mind to be distracted and a distracted mind is often a worried mind and when we're distracted we lose contact with the present moment. To experience unpleasant thoughts and feelings safely, to learn that everything changes, that changes come and go like the weather and to develop self-acceptance and self-compassion. So a definition that's commonly used of mindfulness is provided by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, who's a world expert on mindfulness, and in the 1970s, he introduced mindfulness to Western psychology and medicine. His definition is uh, as follows. Mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. This definition leads us to act our activities today, which hopefully will highlight some of these components of mindfulness. And at the end of each um, exercise, I'll just um, ask you a question um, or two that will help you reflect on the exercise. Um, so if you're attending today with a parent or teacher, carer or support worker, um, you might want to invite them to also um, reflect with you if you'd like to do that. So our first exercise is a simple, um, a simple one which helps us become um, uh, connected with the present moment and uh, easy to use at any time when you find yourself getting more caught up with your thoughts and feelings. And it's called Take 10 Breaths. So get yourself into a comfortable position. Close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so or just fix your gaze on a, a non-distracting spot. We'll start off by taking 10 slow deep breaths with focus on breathing out as slowly as possible until the lungs feel completely empty and then just allowing them to refill by themselves. Notice the sensations of your lungs emptying and then refilling. Notice your rib cage rising and falling. Make a gentle rise and fall of your shoulders as you breathe in and out.
and see if you can just notice your thoughts um, any thoughts that are coming and just let them come and go as if they're passing cars outside your house so just letting your thoughts come and go as if they're passing cars See if you can expand your awareness and as well as noticing your breathing. Notice how you're feeling in your body. You notice if you've got any tension or pain in your body and, and where that is. And then when you're ready, just look around the room, notice what you can see here or touch and just have a, a think for a moment about how it was to do that exercise. The next exercise we're going to do is called mindfulness of the hand. So for the next five minutes I'm going to uh, ask you to simply observe your hand as if you're a curious scientist who's never seen a hand before. So before we start, notice what your mind might be predicting about the next five minutes. Your mind might predict, be predicting this is going to be weird, tedious, boring. Um, so keep hold of your prediction because it may be boring or tedious or the next five minutes might go quite quickly. So again, find a comfortable position. And then to begin, hold one of your hands upwards like this with the face with the palm facing towards you just at a comfortable distance from your face if it's that, that not that's not possible maybe someone could assist you or you can look at someone else's hand and now start off by mentally tracing the outline of your hand starting at the base of your thumb and just working around um, the outline of your fingers and in between and then just tracing down to where your hand tapers into your wrist now notice the colour of your skin on your hand. It might be pink or white or mixed colours. If you've got darker skin, there might be browns and yellows. And notice there are different shades of each colour. Now very slowly, stretch your fingers out quite hard and notice how the skin in the palm of your hand changes so it becomes it blanches or becomes paler. Slowly release the tension in your hand and notice that the colour returns as it was before. Look at the large lines on your palm and the shapes that they make as they converge and diverge. Zoom in on one of the large lines on your palm and notice the small lines that feed in and out of it, crisscross it. And then scan the surface of your, of your palm and notice these um, vertical lines and horizontal lines, deep and shallow grooves and lots of tiny little lines that you can hardly see. Now slowly move your little finger and your thumb and join them together and notice how the flesh bunches up in your palm and then slowly release your hand and notice that the flesh returns to normal. So do that again just joining your thumb and your little finger and looking at all that flesh in your palm all bunching up and then just releasing your hand and noticing that your palm returns to normal. Now have a look at one of your fingertips and see if you can notice if you hold it up to the light um, that spiral pattern that we expect to see in a fingerprint and notice that that spiral pattern doesn't just uh, stop at your fingertip but extends all the way down your finger to your palm. Now turn your hand to the karate chop position so now you can see the um, skin on the back and the front of your hand and then look at your index finger this one and notice there's a dividing line down down your index finger and there's a different in color difference in color and texture between the skin on the back of your hand and the front of your hand. Now turn your hand over and notice the skin on the back of your hand. Um, notice any judgments or criticisms that come to mind as you look at your hand. Notice the colour and the texture of your skin over your knuckles and veins, maybe any moulds or blemishes. Now gently curl your hand into a fist and rotate your fist and notice the grooves in the knuckles. Now clench your fist really hard and notice that the shape and the prominence of your knuckles is, is more is more pronounced. 
Then slowly open your fist and notice that your knuckles disappear into your hand. So do this again, just clenching your fist up, noticing how your knuckles are very prominent, releasing your hand and noticing your knuckles disappear into your hand. Now look at one of your fingernails, notice the different colours in your nails, there's different, um, there might be different textures, ridges and uh, grooves in your fingernail and also how the cuticle seals your nail in. And then just wriggle your fingers up and down and notice the tendons moving under the skin, jumping up and down on the back of the hand and that should bring us to about the end of five minutes. So were your predictions about the past five minutes accurate or was your experience different from what you perhaps automatically judged it might be? Uh, by closely paying attention to something we take for granted and think we know like our hand, um, was there something that you discovered, something new? And finally, what might happen in your closest relationships if you pay attention to important people in your life as closely as you just did to a hand? So they're just some questions um, to reflect on that, that exercise. So now for the final exercise, um, by way of introduction, um, when we feel stressed or anxious or depressed or just generally overwhelmed, we tend to become very caught up in our thoughts and we spend a large portion of our time in our heads going over and over things from the past or worrying about the future. And as I mentioned before, we therefore lose contact with the present moment. So the aim of this exercise, which is called Leaves on a Stream, is to help you unhook from your thoughts by stepping back from them and just observing them uh, rather than getting lost in them or caught up in them. It's important to, note, important to note that this exercise is not a meditation, although it does have a meditation type feel about it. And it's also not designed to get rid of your thoughts or to make you think positive or calming thoughts. The aim of the exercise is to help you to relate to your thoughts differently, whatever your thoughts might be. So to get ready, just again, get yourself comfortably positioned. Take a couple of deep breaths. And then just let your breathing return to its normal rate and rhythm. Notice how your body feels, however you might be positioned. Listen for any sounds you can hear. And close your eyes if you feel comfortable to do so, or again place your gaze on a fixed spot. So see if you can imagine you are sitting on the bank of a gently flowing stream. Take a few moments to imagine the scene around you. The sound of the flowing water, the fresh air. Just imagine in that scene. You notice the water is flowing along and the leaves from overhanging trees are dropping into the water and floating on. So notice one leaf dropping on and then another and just let them float on. Now for the next minutes, few minutes, um, take each thought that enters your mind and place it on a leaf and then let it float by. So do this with each thought, whether it's painful, pleasurable or neutral. Even if you have a joyous or enthusiastic thought, just place the thought on a leaf and let it float by. If your thoughts momentarily stop, just continue to watch the stream and sooner or later your thoughts will start up again. Allow the stream to flow at its own pace. Don't try to speed it up and rush your thoughts along. You're not trying to rush the, long, the leaves along or get rid of your thoughts. You're allowing them to come and go at their own pace. If your mind says, this is silly, I'm bored or I'm not doing it right, well, these are thoughts. So 
So place these thoughts on leaves too and let them pass by. If a leaf gets stuck, just allow it to hang around until it's ready to float by. And if the thought comes up again, just watch it float by another time. If a difficult or painful feeling arises, just simply acknowledge it. Say to yourself, I notice I'm having myself having a feeling of boredom, frustration, impatience. So place these thoughts on leaves and let them float along. If you think no thoughts are coming, that's a thought. So place it on a leaf and let it go. From time to time, your thoughts may hook you and distract you from being fully present in this exercise. And this is normal as our minds often wander. As soon as you realise that you've become sidetracked or distracted, just gently bring your attention back to the bank of the flowing stream and place distraction, whatever it was, on a leaf and let it float by. So just keep doing this for another 30 seconds, placing whatever thoughts arise, placing them on leaves and letting them float on. When you're ready, just open your eyes and notice what you can see, hear or touch.